Apple is one of the biggest targets when it comes to Chinese smartphone knockoffs. It's not very uncommon to hear about a device being sold overseas that looks nearly identical to the iPhone. I'm Steven from Tag Magnet, and today we'll have a closer look inside of a fake iPhone and take a look behind the scenes of counterfeit goods from China. In 2011, Apple found out about a string of fake Apple stores in China that were completely copying its retail shops. A total of 22 fake Apple stores, plastered with Apple's trademarks, were ordered to stop using Apple's logos and more. Many of them have been kitted out to look exactly like real Apple stores. The sales stuff were blue t-shirts with a white Apple logo and display iPads, iPhones and Apple Watches on the same wooden tables you would see in a real Apple store. This is a common problem in China, but at least they mostly sell real products. Even worse are the counterfeit device stores in Zhenzhen, which I've seen with my own eyes, and they just sell replicas. Apple assembled its own anti-counterfeiting team back in 2008 to tackle the issue, but was reportedly getting little help at that time from the Chinese authorities. However, the Chinese government has in recent years been making greater efforts to act against the trade. The Beijing police has raided and closed down a factory which employed hundreds of workers on six production lines to make more than 41,000 counterfeit iPhones. The total value of the fake phones was estimated at 120 million yuan, which is around 19 million US dollars. This is almost better than selling weed. Also in Dubai in 2016, they found a big shipment with more than 26,000 phones which were seized, in addition to 1.3 million fake phone accessories. But why don't they get shut down by the Chinese government? Because even though these companies are shady, they still pay tax and make profit and pay somebody from the government. This market is huge and there has always been people buying these fake iPhones, because they are fun and incredibly cheap. The government of China got under a lot of pressure in the last years, and they say that they are working on the issue. But in reality, they really don't and the business keeps booming. There are probably hundreds of small factories who might see a product on the internet and think, hey, I can do this. But how are you going to shut down all of them? How can you even find where they are? And the money you spend suing them is more than you can actually get out of the lawsuit. The copycat factory doesn't show its address on Alibaba, only a trading company who represents them. Sometimes you have to track down two or three trading companies before you get to the actual factory. But why are these phones so cheap? Now, One of the most commonly known reasons for the low prices of the Chinese smartphones is the low cost of labor force. China has some of the lowest labor costs in the world, and that's the main reason why many manufacturers build products there. Also, these manufacturers do not pay any license fees, which listed companies have to, and other than that, they use low-cost hardware. I took one of the clones apart and had a closer look inside. Alright guys, so let's have a look on what we can find inside of the fake iPhone. So while the box itself, as I've shown you before, it really looks like a legit box. For sure, the stickers are looking a little bit weird, they are not on the correct spot, but well, the box itself says iPhone here, Apple logo here, and also the front really looks like an Apple iPhone box. Now inside of the box you can find all the accessories, so from a USB cable to headphones to the charger. So usually when you buy a Chinese fake iPhone you get that weird Apple charger. Um, this one here says on the label something like, I don't know, I can't even read it. 0. Point, no, it says 1 amp, so actually this should be a 5 watt charger, so that's pretty default. But I've seen some from the inside and they look a little bit more Chinese than the real one with C certification. The cable itself, well, this is a 50-50 chance that it works with the real iPhone as the pinout is different, the resistance is a little bit different, and sometimes it's not recognized on the real iPhone. But I've tested this also on the real iPhone and it works. But the cable quality, well, it feels like a $1 cable from Amazon. Now the headset. So the headset itself looks really like the real deal. Apple logo here on the back, then if you open it up, as you can see, same packaging. Um, yeah, let's get it out, and I'm actually always surprised how real that looks like. 
but as soon as you try to listen to them, then you will hear they sound really, really crappy. Okay, so let's do this. Um, there we go. As you can see, they come with a um, lightning connector and yeah, the plastic quality looks quite okay, but the cable feels and looks a little bit cheap and it's very lightweight. So I would say it's almost like half of the weight of a real iPhone headset. So the drivers inside of the, of the headphones of the speakers are really, really terrible. All right, guys, so that are the accessories. So now let's have a look at the iPhone itself. So there we go. First of all, let's just make sure it's switched off. So I will quickly switch it off. And there we go. Oh my God, this is so damn slow. This is incredible. I can't even turn it off. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't care if it's off or not. Let's just take it apart. So the real iPhone has a bunch of screws here at the bottom, actually just two. And I have here a um, set to open up the real iPhone 10. So there we go. As you can see, you actually need all that to separate the top from the bottom and um, yeah, to open it up. And at the bottom, so near the lightning port, there are two torque screws and they are very tiny. And I'm actually curious if it's even the same size here on the fake iPhone. So there we go. And yes, it's the same size. So first screw is out. Now second screw is out. And well, almost done. For sure, we also have to remove the SIM card tray, which is right over here. So let's get it out. And now we are almost ready to go. So to take it apart. Therefore, we have this suction head and suction cup and I will now try to lift off the display. If it, whoa, that's actually pretty tough, tougher than on the real one. So, okay, so I see um, this one here comes off better from the top. So I'll lift it off and then I'll put in such a plastic prior tool. So one second, I should be done. Okay guys, so now I'm able to actually lift off the display and there we go. So, so far as I can see, this looks totally different than the real iPhone if you have a look inside. So as you can see, this here is the battery. Then here we have um, the cable for the digitizer and here we have the LCD cable which um, yeah, just already came off. And the battery looks like a 1300 milliamp hours battery. So it looks really, really tiny and slim. And yeah, I'll quickly try to remove a little bit more from the whole chassis so we can have a look inside and there we go. Okay guys, now this is a little bit funny because um, I also have to remove the back side in order to um, get to the screws of the motherboard because as you can see, this is a very solid metal construction inside. Actually, I didn't expect this. And um, yeah, the screws are from the other side. So I'll, I'll try to get off um, the back plate in the same way I've removed the front. So let's see if I can do this. And there we go. Well, guys, I managed to remove the back cover. And this looks actually like pretty solid glass. So not too bad at all. There was plenty of glue around the glass so yeah to keep it in place and seal it a little bit and this is now how the phone looks from the real the correct side well um the battery has actually no rating on it but it doesn't look like a 1800 milliamp hours battery it looks like uh, 1350 may maybe 1500 maximum and also the battery life of this device is really, really bad. Okay guys, so we can have already a closer look at the internals and actually I didn't expect such a good metal construction. Now, if you have a look at, at the design from here, this looks pretty good. So there is plenty of metal to keep it stable and also to absorb the heat of the chips. So. That's pretty good, but the hardware inside is just very old, very crappy. 
So guys, can you see this? So this is actually the dual camera. So, well, if you have a closer look, then here, that's just the normal lens. And here, there's a dummy camera inside. So this is actually a fake dual camera. All right, so this is how it looks like. And now we can see how they do it. So they just have a plastic thing glued in here, which looks like it would be a camera, but actually it isn't. So this is really, really funny. So guys, this is how the Chinese do it. So I now had a closer look at the motherboard. And if you have a look at the rear camera, which is located here in um, the right bottom corner, then you can see that there's only one camera module and a dual tone LED flash right next to it. Actually, there should be a dual camera, but actually there isn't a dual camera. So here's the module connected to the backside of the motherboard. And well, there was only a dummy, so a fake camera module inside of the plastic cover. So it only has one camera and even that camera module is really one of the worst cameras I've seen in my whole career. Then if we have a look here at the front side, then you can see also the front facing camera, which is located right over here. And here in the middle, there we have the earpiece. The earpiece, so the speaker, is um, located here. As you can see, the black part with red and the black wire, so plus and minus. And it also sounds pretty terrible. All right, then here we have the vibration motor. So just a very yeah default looking vibration motor. Also feels pretty terrible. And here we have the battery. So as you can see, there is no capacity rating on it, but I'll quickly have a look at Google and check what the real capacity of that phone is. Then here at the bottom, so this black piece right over here, which is plastic, includes the speaker. So there are some tiny wires on it. So red and black again for plus and minus. And this is the speaker, which is located here inside of the left grill. So this is definitely a mono speaker with that plastic thing here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So guys, I've now separated the chassis, so the metal chassis from the motherboard, the battery and some other stuff. And actually the metal chassis is looking like a very decent piece of engineering. If you have a closer look here at the inside, then there you can see that this is actually CNC milled. So this is actually some very decent metal construction to hold everything in place and to keep it stable and secure. So actually I didn't expect such a thing inside of the fake iPhone. This looks pretty decent, so yeah. Then let's have a look at the motherboard and I want to show you some things on it. So well, um, always when you see such things, these are called RF shields and they are shielding the chips under them. So in there you will see the chipset, which we are going to check out just in a second. All right, guys, I've now removed the RF shields and we can have now a closer look at the chips on the motherboard. So, well, as you can see, this is the system on chip. So this is the MediaTek 6580, if I'm right. And this chipset is already very old and this was already used in budget smartphones like 50 to 70 to $100 smartphones. Well, it's actually a usable chipset, but this one here is combined with some Hynix memory. And Hynix memory is already some very low priced memory, so this is not comparable with, for instance, Samsung memory. And well, only 512 megabytes of memory. So memory system on chip, which includes the processor, GPU and everything. And all that is basically the heart of that iPhone or fake iPhone. Well, here on this side, you can see all the modem stuff and um, it's also MediaTek on the chip right over here because MediaTek really does um, smartphone solutions for everything. Also here on this side, you can see a couple of chips, but yeah, nothing that important to go through. Well guys, um, that's basically it. So this is what you can find inside of a fake iPhone. So some very old, very cheap chipset combined with some very cheap low performance memory with a fake dual camera and a single camera, which is really crappy. A battery, which probably does not have the full potential and yeah, other than that, um, it's actually decent looking. If you have a closer look again here at that metal construction, then this looks actually like pretty okay quality for what you get. 
but the internal, so the hardware inside, is really not the best. In many cases, Chinese manufacturers choose a MediaTek processor, which is a lot cheaper, plus MediaTek is really big and can offer a local, cheap distribution. Also in clones you usually get chipsets that are a couple of years old. As for the RAM, Chinese manufacturers won't go with double data rate 4 or DDR5 memory, which is found in many of the current top smartphones. Instead they will go for cheaper, Chinese-made DDR3 modules from a cheaper company like Hynix. Also often they fake the specifications in the Android build prop, which can easily make a device show 4GB of RAM instead of real 512MB of RAM. So this was also the case on this fake iPhone. Now many choose also unknown brand camera sensors instead of Sony camera sensors, mostly because, like MediaTek, the local Chinese sensors cost really nothing. The display quality on the clones is not too bad at all, and some even come with a real looking notch. But the panel prices for LCDs and smartphones have gone down a lot, so it's really cheap to get these LCDs. All in all, I would say the device costs roughly 35 to 45 USD to make, and it sells for 135 to 150 USD on DHgate or similar marketplaces. So there's a huge profit in these devices, and that's why factories will continue to do it. In general, it's understood that reiterating or copying is part of the culture, and whoever is better and faster is going to make the deal. So there's even a hard competition between these fake iPhone or fake Samsung manufacturers. But of course, regulations are important, but only if they are enforced. Now there's something you should keep in mind. The best rule of law that is not in place and enforced is basically useless. Ich schaue, schaue ich dein Gesicht an. Ja, sieht's. Ah, ich 